I'm going to say that again. Good morning, New Pilgrim Rest. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. If he woke you up this morning, you ought to be happy. Amen. If you're sitting here right now looking at me, you ought to be happy. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome you to another um, exciting service at the New Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church. I'm going to welcome those who are on Facebook Live. Amen. It is a good, wonderful day. This is a Sunday that we have never seen. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the uh, music ministry if they will deliver us one selection, and I will be right back with a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Could you just stand to your feet and give God a hand clap of praise? Is anybody thankful for all the things that he's done and all the things that he continues to do? The song says, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Does anybody want the glory to rise this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, let clap your hands in this place. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Say, oh, let it rise. Say, Let it rise. Hallelujah to your name. Come on, sing. Let the glory, let, let the, the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Come on, sing. Oh, say. Oh, let it rise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Let the songs of the Lord. Let the songs of the Lord what? rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. We say, oh, let it rise. Oh, come on, say, let it rise. Let it rise. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, say it with us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe? Say, yeah, yeah. He's been so good. Yeah, yeah. 
He's been so kind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a good friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let the glory one more time. Let, Let the, the glory, glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Hallelujah to your name. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, thank you once again, Father, for your, your grace and your mercy that you have bestowed upon us um, just on today, Father. Um, Father, when we think about what you have done for us, Father, what you think about when we think about what your son did on Calvary's cross, Father, when you think about how you raised him up out of the grave, Father, we, have just, we are just so thankful, Father. Father, please forgive us of our sins that we have committed against your holy word, Father. Father, we know that we are not always what you want us to be, Father. So, Father, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, Father. Father, cleanse our heart from all unrighteousness, Father. Because, Father, we want to be like your son, Father. We want to look like him, Father. Um, Father, as we continue this prayer, Father, we ask for prayer for those who are in bereavement, Father. For those who have lost loved ones who have gone home to be with you, Father. Um, Father, give them um, the strength to go on, Father. Give them the grace upon their lives, Father, that they may live, Father. Father, give them the love and the compassion that only you can give so that they can carry on in this life, Father. And also, Father, we want to ask for prayer for our world, Father. While our world is in turmoil, Father, the, the devil is busy. Father, he is busy spreading lies. He is confusing us, Father. He is discouraging us, Father. He is uh, dividing us, Father. But, Father, with your word, Father, through your word, Father, we can conquer the wiles and the tricks and the schemes of the devil, Father. So, Father, we thank you for your word, Father. Your word that overcomes, Father. Your word that um, gives us strength, Father. Your word that encourages us in times of trouble, Father. Your word that we can hang on, Father, when we don't have anything else, Father, to look forward to, Father. We can thank you for your word, Father. And, Father, before we end this prayer, we want to thank you for our pastor, Father. Thank you for his work, Father. Thank you for his commitment, Father. Father, thank you for the boldness, Father, when he stands to preach your uncompromising word, Father. Thank you for his love for the flock, Father. Father, thank you for him being him, Father. Father, now as he stands, to preach your word on this morning, Father. Give him strength. Bring back to remembrance what he has studied, Father, so we can hear from you on this morning, Father, because we need to hear from you this morning, Father. We need a word, Father. We, some of us are discouraged, Father. Some of us don't know where to turn, Father. Some of us, Father, we are just lost, Father. Father, use our pastor, Father, to show us the way. In Jesus' name, we pray this prayer. Amen. Come on, music ministry. Give us another selection, and the next voice you will hear will be that of the pastor of the New Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church, none other than Dr. B.L. Bell Sr. Amen. 
think about all the things that God has been to you this week and as we offer up this song because he's been more than just enough we can't even fathom all the names to call God he's been creator he's been provider he's been a miracle worker he's been a heart fixer he's been a healer he's been the lover of our souls even at our very worst so we sing this song to you today little Lord it says this you are here turning lives around I worship you I worship you you are here you're mending broken hearts and we worship you yes we worship you all of the room will call them together yes a way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness what my god that is who you are if you can testify to that come on and sing with us he's a way maker way maker miracle worker promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are come on you are here sing you are here turning lights say turning lights around and we worship you I worship you. Come on, sing. You are here. You are here. He's mending broken hearts. Say, mending broken hearts. And I worship you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worship you. Come on, let's call him. He's a way maker, way maker miracle work promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are sing it again oh way maker miracle work promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are come on let's take it up sing it together he's a way maker way maker miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are one more time come on and see he's a way maker way maker miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we lift our hands and call you away way maker miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are sing this with us say that is who you are say that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are yeah oh he's a way maker that's who you are say that is who you are he's a strong tower yes he is that's who you are say 
That is who you No are. music, come on, let's sing this one more time. Say, way maker, say, way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Can we just celebrate who he is? Let's celebrate who he is. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Yes, he, he will fight for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will fight for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he, he will. is the King of Glory. Oh, yes, he, he is. is the King of Glory. Oh, yes, Bless your name, Jesus. Come on, let's say Amen again. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. us here on today. We are praising God even now for his goodness and for his mercy. You do know that God is a good God, don't you? I'm going say it again. You do know that God is a, a good God. Amen. He's a merciful God, uh, and we ought to just give his name praise just for the mere fact that he made another day and allowed us to be a part of the day that he made. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank God to our listening audiences that are here that's listening in on us on this morning. We give God praise, honor, and glory again. Thank you for joining in with us on this morning. Uh, we won't hold you long. We want to be brief, but we certainly want to be beneficial. Uh, all of you look so nice in your Impact shirts. This is Impact Sunday. This is Impact Sunday, and we thank and praise God for that. Amen, amen. That, that is a word that is couch chronicled and catalog in the Old Testament. 1 Kings chapter 17. This is the close of clergy month, and I wanted to highlight um, a passage that we're all familiar with, beginning at verse number number eight and the word of the Lord came to him saying arise get thee to Zarephath which belongeth to Zidon and dwell there behold I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee so he arose and went to Zarephath and when he came to the gate of the city behold the widow woman was there gathering of sticks and he called to her and said fetch me I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go in, do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, unto the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elisha. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of which he spake unto Elijah. Oh, that's a marvelous reading, isn't it? 
I, I just want to share with you briefly uh, from this thought. Operating in optimum obedience brings blessings. Operating in optimum obedience brings blessings. Optimum obedience. That's the greatest degree of obedience. That's, that's, that's the apex of obedience. When you operate in optimum obedience. In Seattle, Washington, in Seattle, Washington, Chaplain Justin Robinson tells a true story about his father's grandmother, about his grandmother. He, he, shares, with, he shares with us that uh, in 1949, his grandmother uh, was in the hospital. His dad had just got out of service. It was World War II. And back in those days, all of the soldiers would line up on each side of the street and they would receive rides to go to their various destinations. Justin Robinson's father said, but his home was not, home going was not as favorable uh, as many of the others. Because when he arrived home, he learned that his mother was ill and she was dying. Uh, she had a kidney disease. And the doctors told them if they did not uh, have a drug transfusion before the night, she wouldn't last through the night. Well, back in those days, 1949, they didn't have blood banks. They didn't have uh, services where you could fly blood in. And the problem was her blood type was AB negative. And Justin Robinson says his father left there crying that night, almost to the thought that he didn't want to believe that the doctors had told him that there was no hope for his grandmother if she didn't get the blood transfusion. But all of a sudden, Justin Robinson's father remembered while he was in service, they always taught him about going the extra mile in obedience. And Justin Robinson's father got in his car and began to drive to tell uh, his other, other children to come say their farewell to their grandmother because she wouldn't be there in the morning. And while going there, he noticed that there was one soldier that kept waving at him to stop and give him a ride. Well, he was in no frame of mind to do no good deed on this night. Uh, he, he, was, he was frustrated, he was crying, he was hurt because of his grandmother dying. Well, in spite of that, he stopped and gave the soldier a ride. And the soldier noticed he was crying and the tears was running down his cheek. And the soldier asked him, sir, what's, what's the problem? And, and Justin Robinson's father didn't seem like he wanted to talk. And the soldier just kept asking me, can I do anything for you? Finally, he said, my, my mother is dying. Uh, and if she doesn't get a blood transfusion by in the morning, she's going to die. Well, Justin, Justin, Justin's father said, he turned and looked at the soldier and said, there's nothing I can, I can do. At that moment, the soldier put out his hand, the palm of his hand. His dog tags were in his hand. And the blood type was AB negative. The soldier said, turn this car around and let's go to the hospital so I can give your mother the blood transfusion. Well, the story goes, his mother lived to 1996. In fact, she lived 46, she lived, she lived 46 years after that, that saying, if he had not obeyed and got in the car and drove, and had he not obeyed the Holy Spirit to pick up that, that soldier, his grandmother would have, would have died. And I might be talking to somebody here today who may have a mile of obedience that you're dealing with. Maybe, maybe you don't have the extra mile of obedience. 
Maybe you have a yard of obedience. Maybe you have two feet of obedience. But I come to share with you on today that if you would live and operate in optimum obedience, blessings of God will, sh will come in your life. God wants us to operate in optimum obedience. Not just casual obedience, but optimum obedience. And listen, he wants us to do that even when things are hard. You know, it, 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 obedience, when you operate in optimum obedience, everything is not going to be okie dokie. But in spite of what you're facing, you're willing to operate in optimum obedience because you know that optimum obedience brings a blessing. I, I wanted to look in and tiptoe in on Elijah the Tishbite on this morning. Uh, e Elijah here in this story, in this 17th chapter of First Kings, uh, he, he, he enlightens us on what obedience should be like even when the days of your time are dark. E Elijah, e God gives Elijah a hard assignment. But in spite of the hard assignment, Elijah presses his way through. You do know the story, 16th chapter, he told Ahab that it wasn't going to rain until he said so. Uh, the Bible says over in Luke chapter 4, verse 23, 25, uh, that, that it was going to be three and a half years before it rained. And then over in James chapter 5, verse 17, James even backs that up and said, yeah, it was three years, it was three and a half years. But when Elijah tells him for three years it's not going to rain, apparently six months had passed before Elijah came with the message. Elijah gives Ahab the message, closes up his Bible, gives the benediction, and struts on off. But the Bible says God assigned him to go to the brook of Sherith. God has assigned him to the brook of Sherith. So let's just see, Elijah has to deal uh, with a hiding place. Why would God hide Elijah? Now, now wait a minute, e Elijah had prepared himself. See, the Bible says Elijah was a prophet. Uh, he, he had prepared himself to preach to God's people. He had prepared himself to share with God's people what God had told him to share with them. E Elijah had, had prepared himself to be a spokesman for God. But even after he got you preparing himself, God told him to go hide yourself by the brook of Sherod. Hide myself? I've gone to school. I prepared myself, got myself ready to preach, and you want me to hide myself? God said, go hide yourself by the brook of Sherod. And that's a word to us today. Because even now, we go through moments of our life that we prepared ourselves to do some things and God says not so. He wants us to hide our sails. You see, you see God, God will hide you. God has a way of hiding you through sickness. God has a way of sending you to Brook of Sherrod through a loss of a position. God has a way of sending you to the Brook of Sherrod when friends walk away. If you've gone off and prepared yourself, listen, the brook of Sherrod is where you go when you want to do something for God and God won't let you do it. The brook of Sherrod is a place where you go and you want to you do something for God and God keeps telling you, no, it's not time yet. But even though God is telling you it's not time, you got to remain obedient in spite of what God is telling you. We see, and see God, God, God allows Elijah uh, to go to the brook of Sherrod and there, and there the Lord, the God fed him, the Bible says, he sent a raven to bring him food morning, noon, and evening. He had the brook there where the water was running. The water gave him a lullaby song every evening after he got you eating and all he had to do was eat and go to sleep. But God takes him to the brook of Sherrod uh, to show him and to teach him a lesson that all of us ought to take time to learn. Because at the brook of Sherrod, that's when you learn the true meaning of living in optimum obedience. Because apparently the brook dried up 
In fact, God and God sent a dirty bird to feed him. Now let's, let's take a look at, at Elijah, how God assigns him. God, God uses a dirty bird, a depleted brook, and a, 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 a dried up brook and a depleted barrel. God uses a dirty bird, a dried up brook, and a depleted barrel. That's to get Elijah the way he wanted him to be. Well, and in fact, I thank God for, for, this, for this text because uh, the, the first time, you know what? God uses a bird that he was given, he, he's the only bird that was given a name in the Bible. He was the first bird that was given a name in the Bible. In fact, if you look at Genesis chapter 8, verse 7, Noah sent a raven to go check the water. And see, at the water society, that's the first time a raven, any bird name, was mentioned in the Bible. But then ravens were not, were not the best birds to depend on. Ravens uh, would eat the carcasses of dead animals. But, but God sends a bird that was used to eating the carcasses of dead, and he wants the, the bird to feed Elijah. Now, you, you, no, you're looking at me strange. You don't want no, nobody, no, no bird, no nothing that eats nothing dead to bring you some food. That's what God did. But then God tells him to hide himself. And that's what God does for a lot of his servants. Listen, he, 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 he hid Joseph in prison. He hid Joseph in prison before he went to the palace. He hid, he hid Moses a third of his life on the backside of the desert before he led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he used David to go in and out of caves hiding from Saul and all, before he got into the kingdom, before he became king. God oftentimes will hide us before he get us the way he wants us to be. And take note of this, Elijah had to go to the brook of Sharon and hide himself before he went to Mount Carmel. There can be no Mount Carmel without the Sherrods of life. God oftentimes sends us to places we don't want to be, places we don't want to stay, in order to get us the way he wants us to be. Sometimes you got to go by the brook of Sharon, which is the cutting place. It's the cutting place. Every once in a while, God has to cut on us. Every one, and and now notice, notice the text. Not, not only that, but, 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 watch, but watch his declaration. First point, his declaration is in verse 1. Uh, the Bible said, and Elisha the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now, now, now notice, notice, notice his profession. He, he, Elijah the Tishbite is a prophet. He's, and, and that word prophet in the Hebrew is Nabi, and, and Nabi as always means to, to tell that that God has told you to tell. See, a Nabi doesn't do good about speaking on his own. A prophet only tells what God has told him to share with others. But, but not only is, is, is he a prophet, but, 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 but watch the text, because that's, that's, that's 1A. He is a, a prophet. That's his profession. But watch his position. He's living in Gilead. But then, but, then, but then watch not only uh, his, his profession, you got to watch his, his, his proclamation. He says to him that it's not going to rain in three years or until I say so. God uses Elijah, the Tishbite, the preacher, uh, to bring hope. Now watch this because it's important. Because listen, when it didn't rain uh, for three years, uh, the Bible says, but here, when Elisha uh, goes to Zarephath, he gives a woman hope in Zarephath. Yes, Even though the famine is raging, and sometimes, listen, God allows us to experience the same thing that others experience who are outside of the Christian faith. Uh huh. This, this woman was a Canaanite woman. She she was an Israelite. She she was a, she was a non-believer, but God used her. God used a non-believer to feed his prophet. 
Mm. Now you got to catch this. Got to catch this. Oftentimes, non-believers will obey faster than believers. Yeah, uh, okay, let me let me try that one more time. Oftentimes, <laughs> non-believers will believe more 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 readily than the believer. The, the, those who have walked with God, those who have experienced God's blessing, the, the, those who got a, a relationship with God, we sometimes contemplate and debate, but this text says as soon as, as she was told, she contemplated and she told Elijah, I only have a little meal in a barrel. I have a little meal and a little oil, and I'm going to take that, I'm going to fix it, and me and my son is going to die. The famine was so great, the Bible says she was gathering sticks for fuel to make the fire. The famine was so great, she couldn't even pick up wood to make the fire. She was gathering sticks to make the fire. But the Bible says the man of God shows up now. Apparently, God didn't tell her anything about a preacher coming to be with her that day. And apparently he didn't tell Elijah that the woman knew he was coming. Watch the text. The text says, the text says, when Elijah shows up, he goes to Zarephath and he gets to the gate and there he finds this woman picking up sticks. That's what the Bible says. Now watch this. The, the Bible says not only that, but when she was picking up sticks, the Bible says Elijah said to her, fetch me some water. A little water. She didn't, she didn't have any problem with the little water. She had a surplus. She had a surplus of water. But he says, but he says, but he says, bring, bring me a morsel of bread. Make me. Okay, she said, now you're now, now you going to move from surplus to sacrifice. I ain't ready for that. Now let's not be too hard on her. She got some first cousins in this 21st century. We do well off our surplus. When you go talking about sacrifice, when you call talking about sacrifice, that sometimes stops us in our, in our tracks. And she stopped and said and told him, listen, I don't, listen, I don't know who you are. I notice you are, you're a preacher, you're an Israelite. I know you're a Jew. I, 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 know, I know you've got to be a man of God, but she said, listen, I, Listen, I don't have nothing for you. I, I'm just barely, can't you see, I'm barely making it myself. And, and the Bible said, now watch this, this because this, this word barrel is, is, is the Hebrew word tag in the Hebrew, and it means jaw. It wasn't actually a barrel, it was a jaw she had merely. But whether, but whether we recognize it, the King James says barrel, but actually it was a jar of meal. And the Bible says, watch this, she tells Elijah, Elijah says, uh, I, I pray thee, fetch me, fetch, fetch me a cake. He said, but listen, he told her to go on and do what you were starting to do. Go on and make yourself a cake, you and your son. He said, but make mine first. Now, why would God who allow this preacher to prepare himself to preach his word and then give him a congregation of two people. For three years, he had a two-person congregation. The widow and her son. But yet, he was obedient. He, he doesn't jump up and say, I need a bigger church. I need a bigger congregation. He stays there for three years preaching to two people. That's because he had been by the brook of Shareth. God oftentimes will teach us how to be obedient by taking us by the brook of Shareth. But, but, then, but then he comes to Zarephath, which is a, which is a, a, a sweltering pot. He, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place where now, now listen, Zarephath is where 
where, where idol gods live. And, 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 and God sends him to a place uh, where idol gods were worshipped. And, and, and fact, in, in, in fact, Jezebel's daddy was the king of Sidon. And, and, and this was where Zarephath was. And in fact, he sends Elijah in the backyard of Jezebel's home. Mm. He sends Elijah to the backyard of Jezebel's home. Jezebel was from Sidon, and, 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 and her dad was the king, and, and, and that's why he sends it. But Elijah had to be obedient even through this tough assignment that God had given him. The text says, the text says, the text says, he commanded the woman to bring him a cake first. That's priority. And I think I hear Jesus saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. If we could somehow learn to practice optimum obedience, the things we're hoping for, wishing for, trying to get, God will just give them to us if we learn how to just obey him, follow his word. Not the words that you like to follow, but those words that are hard to follow. Sometimes God give us some hard sayings. Love your enemies. That's a hard saying. If you slapped on one cheek, turn it. That, that's a hard saying. Bless those who. That's a hard saying. But it's the hard sayings that God sends us through that prepares us for the next step. Elijah had a next step ministry. Every, God prepared his next step. Every step you read about in this passage, God had laid out for Elijah's life. And when God gets ready to move you, he oftentimes will share with you what your next step is. Only after you completed the last step. Some of us want the next step prior to getting through with the first step. And God won't give you the next step until you first complete the last step. Watch the text. Every step he made, God was giving him instructions. That, that, that's when you follow optimum obedience, God will unveil some things to you. And, and the Bible said, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let, let me hurry up and get through this because uh, we, we, we have been able to see, no, number one, that the prophet had... Uh, a declaration uh, but but then watch his departure uh, oftentimes God will send us in some comfortable places only to have us to depart from that place and 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 we don't have no problem staying there but we have a problem when God tells us to leave there his departures in verses 2 through 6 God told him to get up from the brook leave the brook and go to Zarephath but then he goes to Zarephath and, and, and watch this, uh, uh, it, 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 he, he has some unexpected company. Now he really didn't, the urgency to get there was one thing, but the unexpected company of being fed by a widow. Now listen, whenever God mentions a widow, a widow back then uh, was one of, the, one, one of the weakest people you could ever want to meet. Meaning they didn't have anything. The, uh, the, the widow and, and, and orphans, they, they, they literally didn't have anything. But somehow God tells him, I've got a widow woman. Because God can take that who doesn't have and give them what they need. So he picks, he selects a widow woman uh, to help Elijah. But now watch, watch, watch the text because the text says, the text says, she says, as the Lord thy God liveth, I don't have it. Have you ever uttered those words? I don't have it. 
Come, come on, talk. Have you ever uttered those words? I don't have it. Th th those are words that we all have had to say in our life at one time or another. I don't have it. I ain't got it. The question is, what do you do when you ain't got it? Elijah tells us to remain obedient. Because the text says, watch this, the text says, she says, she says to him, I don't have it. She says, the Lord, thy God. In other words, your God ain't my God. Thy God. But watch Elijah, he didn't give up on her. Before he gets through with her, she's, she's going to be converted to his God. Watch the text. And Elijah said unto her, verse 13, fear not. Go do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me. Now he's telling the woman to wait on him. Not only should you make it, he says, bring it to me. <laughs> he's saying, after that, you can make some for you and your son. She just told the boy, I ain't got it. Is he deaf? Watch Elijah. Elijah said, in verse 14, but thus said the Lord, watch this, God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sended rain upon the earth. And she did, watch this now, and she, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. In other words, she obeyed him. And she and he in her house did eat many days she did according to the same of Elijah now 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 I, I told you Elijah's name he, 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 El is the prefix of Elijah's name and that means that, that's the name used for God El Shaddai, El Shaddai. That, that's the name for God. El is the shortened name for God. And the, and the, and the suffix Jah is the name for God. So, so Elijah's name encompasses God. And God is the one that's speaking through him to the woman. And you, ought to have a, you ought to have a pastor that can tell you some things. That you'll believe. That you'll trust that he's telling you what you need to do and what you need to know. She listened to Elijah according to what he said. She had obedience. When we practice obedience, obedience is better than sacrifice. She obeyed the man of God. God doesn't want us to obey him just because we are fearful of him. He wants to, us to obey him so he can be a blessing to us. Uh, and that, that's, he wants us to obey him so he can be a blessing to us. But God cannot bless you when you live outside his word. Have I got a witness here? So the text says, the text says, the text says, she went and did according to the word of Elisha. And the Bible says, and the barrel of the jar of meal did not waste, for it did not say it ran over. It said it didn't, it didn't waste. It did not say the barrel 
was overflowing. It said it did not, it did not waste. In other words, every time she went to make a cake, it was something in the barrel. Uh, no, notice, no, no, notice the text says not just she and her son ate, but it says in her house, which suggests there were other people living in the house. She was able not only to feed her and her son and Elijah, but everybody that lived in the house. They ate from this little meal and little cruise of oil. But had she not obeyed the man of God, not only would she have not eaten, but her son would have died. But because she obeyed the man of God, watch his dependence was on God bringing this to pass. The Bible says she and her household was able to eat many days after. And I might be talking to somebody here that's struggling with obeying what the Lord has said for you to do. I may be talking to somebody here that's struggling uh, with uh, abiding by the word of God. I may be talking to somebody here today who contemplating whether or not you should obey what God is telling you or whether you should obey what your mind is telling you. I, I want to tell you that if you do it the way God has told you to do it, you'll always come out on top. You'll always be in the winning circle. In other words, don't uh, rely on what you see. Rely on what you know. Don't look at the little meal in a barrel. Trust uh, the God uh, of the barrel. Trust the God uh, that's always on time. Trust the God uh, who's guided you through your times of living uh, by the sheriff brook. Uh, trust a God uh, that's always uh, shows up uh, on time. Trust the God uh, that when you were sick, uh, he made you well. Trust the God uh, that when you didn't have uh, anything, God uh, provided for you. And, uh, have I got a witness here? You ought to trust a God uh, that's made ways uh, out of no ways. Uh, trust the God uh, that when you didn't have uh, a job, God uh, gave you employment. Have I got a witness here? Trust the God that when the pandemic first hit the same God that kept you through the pandemic is the same God that's keeping you today. Is there anybody here know that God is a keeper? Is there anybody here know that God is a need meter? Have I got a witness? He'll meet your need, but you ought to remain obedient. Have I got a witness here? Thank God for uh, allowing us another opportunity to obey uh, his word. Uh, obey God uh, and God uh, will turn your dark days uh, into bright days. Uh, trust a God uh, and God uh, can take the little uh, and give you much. Uh, trust God uh, and he will not only take care of you, uh, but he'll take care of your whole household. Uh, have I got a witness here? God knows how to give you what you need uh, and when you need it. Uh, if you trust in God, uh, he will uh, supply your every need. Uh, have I got a witness here? Thank God uh, that he tells us in Malachi, bring you all the tithes uh, into the storehouse. Uh, that there might be meat uh, in mine house. Uh, and then he said, prove me now, try me now, and see when I open you the windows uh, and pull you out of blessing, uh, that there shall not be room uh, enough to receive it. Uh, but you got to obey God. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, you got to trust him uh, and obey him. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, thank God uh, that Elijah uh, obeyed God. Uh, thank God uh, there was others uh, obeying God. Uh, thank God uh, for the father of faith uh, come on in Abraham uh, 
Tell us about obeying God. Uh, tell us about the optimal obedience uh, and what God will do. Uh, Abraham want me to tell you that God told me to take my only son uh, and sacrifice him. Thank God uh, I obeyed God. Uh, I took him up to the mountain. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, I pulled out the knife uh, and got ready to sacrifice uh, my only son. Uh, but as I obeyed God, uh, something had a hold of me. Uh, an angel uh, put a double wrist lock on my arm uh, and stopped me from sacrificing my son. Uh, God wanted to know uh, that I really trust him. Uh, God wanted to know that I really obey him. Uh, thank God that Elijah obeyed God. Uh, thank God that the widow woman obeyed God. Uh, everybody in the 17th chapter obeyed God. Uh, the ravens obeyed him. Uh, he brought him uh, food in the morning, uh, food in the evening. Uh, food in the noonday. Every time you obey God, God will turn things around for you. Is there anybody here know what it's like to obey God when things are hard, when you can't see your way, when it don't seem like you're going to make it, you don't have money to pay your bills, and you got a, you got a decision to make, should I pay my bills or give God what belongs to him? Trust God. I said trust God. Put it all on the line. Put it all on the line and trust my God. God will. I said, God will. Won't he do it? I said, God will. I said, God will come through. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Won't you trust God? Come with me. Put your trust in the man who steal the water. Put your trust in the man that created the whole wide world. Put your trust in the man who scooped up the residue of dust and created man and breathed into the nostrils of man and man became a living soul. You ought to trust in God. Trust in God. He's the one that put the stars in the silver socket. Trust in God. He's the one that created the sun and placed it 93 million miles from the earth and told the sun don't come one inch closer because they'll all burn up and don't back up because they all freeze. Trust in God who created the moon as a lunar looking glass so the sun could primp at night. Trust God to bring you through. Won't he do it? I said won't he do it? He's the same God that gave his only son, gave his only son to die on a hill called Calvary. Trust God because he let him take his son and they nailed his hands and nailed his feet. They hung him high and stretched him wide. He died. I say he died. He died. I say he died. He died on a hill called Calvary. But that's not the end of the story because early, I say early, 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 early. Early Sunday morning, got up from the grave with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. If you trust God, if you trust God and never doubt him, he will come through. Won't he come through? There ought to be some Christians in the house that know God will come through. Didn't he come through when you didn't have money to pay your bills? Didn't he come through when the pandemic was here? Coronavirus was all around you, but he kept you safe. Won't he come through? I say, won't he come through? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? You ought to be a witness that the God I serve is a God I serve. He's a come through God. Ain't he a come through God? He's a come through God. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Say yeah, say yeah. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Operating in optimum obedience. You may not see your way, but when you operate in optimum obedience, the greatest degree of obedience. God will come through. I'm not telling you what I read. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm lifting transcripts from my own life. God will come through. 
just when you need him in the nick of time. He will come through. And I'm looking at some faces that God has come through for. You, you ain't waving your hand, you ain't clapping, but I, I'm looking at some faces that God has come through for you in your life. I, I'm looking at some faces that God have taken by the brook of Sherith. Some things you wanted to do, God said you couldn't do them. Places you wanted to go, God said you couldn't go. I'm looking at some people that God has taken from bad times to good times. If you really be truthful with yourself underneath the skin, God has brought us all from a mighty, mighty long ways. Did we deserve it? No. No, no, no. Should have been dead, sleeping in our grave. But God's grace and mercy kept me. God's grace and mercy kept me. And I have to testify, I almost, I almost let go. But grace and mercy kept me. Uh-huh. Grace and mercy. And if you be honest, grace and mercy kept you as well. Door to church is open. Might be one kind of baptism Christian experience. The door to church is open. If you're here today, if you're here, grace and mercy. Thank God for grace and and mercy. Almost gave up. Almost. Are there any almosts in the house? I mean, when that time it was so dark in your life, you almost threw up both hands. But God kept you and brought you through. You ought to be a witness that he, that he will do it. He will do it. If you're here today without a church home, we welcome you to come. The door to church is open. You come. If you need prayer, call 214-637-1019. Door to church is open. Trust me 
if you will only put your trust in me trust me trust me if you Trust me, trust me, oh, trust me, if you will only trust me, trust me. Trust me. Church, say amen again. Wow. If you would only trust me. If you would only trust me. Thank and praise God again for this day. And for all of you. fuel this morning. I know you were blessed tremendously uh, from the teachings of our assistant pastor. Amen. Uh, Reverend Davis, uh, thank and praise God for him, uh, what God is doing in and through him. Amen. 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 I want to encourage you uh, to get here at 8 o'clock. If you're uh, at home, tune in at 8. Uh, 8 o'clock on Sunday mornings for fuel. Amen. If you're doing it uh, via Zoom, make sure your mute button is, is on, uh, it's off, so when, when uh, he's teaching and others are tuned in, whatever you're doing in the background will be muted. Amen, amen, amen. So we thank and praise God again for this day. Now, it's time to give God what belongs to him. It's time to give God what, be- well, that was, that was some mighty faint clapping, that was some Mighty, wow, wow, that's a mighty, mighty faint clapping. Uh, when you think Please help spread the word of our next upcoming food drive, Tuesday, November the 2nd, from 9 to 11 a.m. Please see Sister Joanne Coleman or Reverend Anthony McCoy if you are available to volunteer on this day. Thank you for viewing Pilgrim Land News. And if you would like to be a part of this worship service, please watch this quick video about Givelify. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done.